Laura, you start and tell us. Uh, she was two and a half, and so many of these young kids, you don't know because you get you think it, it's just a cold. You know, you think the worst, but then it ends up a cold. Or, or and then as they get older, you think, oh, it's definitely just a cold. But that's not how this happened. So she was two and a half, and then what happened? Uh, October 2010, um, she was waking up in the mornings with a headache, and I thought it was a little unusual, but tried to convince myself that it was, you know, sinus infection, or she, I mean, she would actually say, my head hurts, but I try to think, like, well, maybe it's your ear. Yeah. And for a couple of days, kind of ignored it, because then she'd wake up, she'd get out of bed, and then it was perfectly fine. Um, it increased in frequency. I, I guess a few days later, I, we went to the pediatrician, and the pediatrician was looking more for a pattern. It had been a little inconsistent, and that it would be headache, vomiting in the morning, then she'd be fine, because once, once you get up, the pressure in your head decreases, so that's why she wasn't having any problem after she got up. Yeah. But it continued, and um, I'm a psychologist, so I know just enough to be dangerous with the brain. So, and of course, in my mind, the worst fear is brain tumor, right? Yeah. And so that's crossed my mind. And um, we we got in pretty quickly to get an MRI because the pediatric neurologist was concerned enough with her symptoms because it's it ends up it's not very normal for kids to be uh, waking out of sleep from a headache. Yeah. Um, we, Greg and I aren't headache people, so we, we knew she wasn't learning it from us. You know, that crossed my mind, too. She sees us having a headache. Maybe she'd say, I have a headache, yeah. but we don't. That's not how we are. So um, so the we got in um, at Wake Med to get an MRI. They almost refused us because she had thrown up that day, and that day was particularly bad. She hadn't really recovered, and she was sort of in this fog, sort of, evidently sort of preoccupied by the pressure in her head. Yeah. I sort of flipped out, and anyway, they found an anesthesiologist to put her under general anesthesia to do the MRI, and um, we were, it was, that was such a trying day, and um, sure enough, uh, she did, they found the tumor, and then we were transferred to Duke that night. And Greg, so, um, so you find out, were you at the hospital the, the first time? Yeah, we were, we were both at the hospital, yeah. uh, waiting on the results, and, and they put us into a room, and we were both just waiting and it was taking forever um, and then we saw our neurologist coming to the hospital and we knew that wasn't a good sign. So you took you took her to Duke and uh, the doctors come in and they they say hey uh, we think it's a, a tumor here's where it is and did they give you options at that point I mean she's two and a half. Uh, as soon as we knew that it was a tumor we knew that it had to come out yeah. Um, originally, we were told it was going to be a week or two before they would be able to schedule her. And it was October 29th, and uh, the, the surgeon, Dr. Grant, was able to get a team in on uh, Sunday morning, which was October 31st, and, and do the surgery. So we're, we were grateful for um, people coming in on their off time to do that. October 31st, where all other families are getting ready to go out trick-or-treating, take care of everything, and you guys are at Duke and hoping for the best. And so after, how long did the surgery take? She's two and a half. Six hours. Wow. And that's in a good, I mean, she it was in a pretty good location, and it was still six hours. So she comes out, Dr. Grant comes out and tells you guys what? He, he tells us he thinks he's gotten the whole tumor and it's been a good resection and uh, you know the next step is, is oncology um, so transferring when she recovers um, to doing chemotherapy yeah what are you guys expecting to have to go through like what else did the doctor say that you would need to be doing right now we're in a an immunotherapy trial where um, they're actually creating a vaccine from her tumor which is why we need this amazing research money. You know, there's not a lot of research dollars donated to pediatric issues generally anyway, and particularly pediatric cancer, and with brain tumors being the leading cause of death in pediatric cancer patients, it's helpful to have this money. Um, very, very helpful. We're very, very appreciative for all of you people donating. Um, the vaccine, uh, in theory, could be a cure. 
and honestly, right now, I we I don't know what the backup plan is because this this was a backup plan. Um, I've been afraid to ask Dr. Garangan. I honestly, it's like I want to know and I don't want to know. Um, I think she's only done high dose or myeloablative chemotherapy once with stem cell rescue. Um, we may, and that's where we're on the transplant unit. Um, we were there 28 days. Um, wonderful group of people there. Um, so I'm thinking that that may be, not, I really, I guess I don't know, yeah. but I guess it's the fear. I, she's not had radiation and she has a genetic condition that makes her even less of a good candidate. Yeah. Nobody's really a good candidate yeah. for radiation. But. Yeah. I, I just, I, I think, you know, it was the first time around was shocking and then when it came back it was just as shocking. I think we had worse. the hope that it was. I think worse on the, yeah. I, we we're hoping we we're done. And, and when it comes back, you just feel deflated. I can feel your heart hurting. Like Ella Kate is now um, diagnosed when she was two and a half. Now she's she's four and a half, and so many uh, so many families will come in and say, "I don't know how she does it because she never complains. She has to go through this all the time. She is the happiest girl." We're the ones that are falling apart. And when you have to go through, and I may be wrong in your case, so let me know if I am. But whenever you have to go in a trial, uh, that's never a good thing. Because in that case, they've tried so many things. And this is a trial. So if they can come with this vaccine, here's another example of this vaccine with an adult. There's uh, this one type of tumor called a glio. Well, just in the past few years, they came up with a vaccine, and that's why they're trying this trial to see if it works with kids. So if you have a glio, uh, then you then are able to get this vaccine that has, in recent tests, have been able to shrink the, the mass that they couldn't otherwise get after. Well, when a, when a baby that is two and a half, you can't do radiation at that point because it's going to be... For that age, it was still growing and everything. You can't do that. We talked today a lot about radiation, the long-term consequences, especially at such a little age. And so this vaccine, which goes in and then goes right to the tumor, that's what they're hoping for right now. And that would have, be able to help the family. And, Kate, and this is how the Brain Tumor Foundation uh, pediatric Brain Tumor Foundation is doing, they're working for this type of result. You always have your fingers crossed, you guys, whenever something comes out. And, and just like we were a few minutes ago when Lori said, I don't even want to ask because you don't want to get crushed again from what's been going on. But this is one of the examples of your money today. And is this vaccine going to help in this trial that we're going through right now? We sure hope so, but this money is going to continue to cost the researchers and the doctors day to day to day. One trial can cost a hundred thousand dollars or more. Hundred fifty thousand. Yeah, and these people, the doctors, go in on the weekends. We were just talking. Uh, Eric and I were just talking to one of the doctors that came in. Doctor Becker from Duke. Yeah. They're working tomorrow on Thanksgiving trying to find a cure for this specific brain tumor. I think it's like DIPT or something like that. And people that are working on Thanksgiving, not because they're going to get double time for it, because they're giving up their day to go in and make sure that this research can get done as quickly as possible. That's why they're working on Thanksgiving, Christmas. They work 24-7 with your money and do it the right way. I want to give you the phone number again. And we just ask you to please call with whatever you have. 1-866-975-CURE. 1-866-975-C-U-R-E. And that's 2873 if you have a smartphone. 2873. So we wanted to have Lori and Greg in here because uh, sometimes it's just easier to talk when Ella Kate's outside. Having fun. Who's it? Is that your somebody's sister or 
friend? Uh, Jennifer King is actually Dr. Garangan's study coordinator and yeah. a nurse. And, and she's you, here with you. Yeah, if you could make her come in. She was being shy, but I, yeah. I wanted her to come but talk. Isn't that amazing that, you know, these doctors are so dedicated to these kids. Like, they really, really care. Yeah. Duke's been amazing. I mean, all the way around from, from the start to the today, process now. Because I was just looking her outside a few minutes ago. She had her, her little hat on. And her little polka dots and a little necklace. She's so pretty. <laughs> what are we at now? What are, what are they saying now? I know this vaccine we talked about. You mean just treatment coming mm -hmm, up? Mm -hmm. She has an MRI on Tuesday. Um, this will be the first time we're trying it without sedation because she's become, um, she's very difficult to sedate. And she had an arrhythmia, and so now they don't want to do sedation. So we're actually going to try it with just a little Valium. Yeah. Um, and hope that goes well, so I'm worried about that. And mom then, and dad um, probably need some too. Yeah, they wouldn't go for They didn't go for that. I, I asked, but, um, you know. Um, Can we then, have a family plan with yeah. that? Yeah. We are at the Wednesday every week. will be admitted for um, two, I don't know if it's two or three days uh, for inpatient chemo. Yeah, yeah. And then about a week or so after that, she'll start an oral round. Yeah. So, uh, there's only just so many ways we could ask for people to call, but each of you individually, can you just start and where you start, people that are listening right now, and why should another mom who has healthy kids and they're running around taking care of everything for Thanksgiving, why should they spend their hard-earned money for this situation? Um, I just... They're really, I, I try to have hope um, that they can come up with a cure. I think there's really some promising research, and we just need the money. You know, the, what were we reading, Greg? The National Cancer Institute, only is 5% of their money goes to pediatrics generally. That's a, all cancers. And um, so brain tumor families really need your help. Um, we would appreciate it. Yeah, I, I, there's definitely not enough money that goes to pediatric brain tumor research, and any any money that uh, anybody can give would be we'd be grateful, thankful of. Um, and I still don't understand how STEM is outpacing uh, so many other cities. Gary, <laughs> Gary, yeah, Durham, um, and, and last you know we're from Bun, so last hour I saw that Bun was number three ahead of Durham and Charlotte and, yeah. and many other yeah. cities, but. I haven't seen a nickel from Chapel Hill yet. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody in their fancy cars and their fancy houses getting ready for your big dinner tomorrow, just pick up the phone and call 1 975 Cure. That's 2873. All right, listen, five minutes, that's all it takes.